Need to learn how to start up that new pit boss for the first time and also how to season it before the first cook? Well, you're in the right place. Today, we're gonna to show you how to load the hopper, start up the pit boss, prime the auger for the first time so it doesn't time out, and then get that pit boss started for the first time. After that, we're gonna season it up so we get ready for the first cook. Stay tuned. So you've got a brand new Pit Boss pellet grill. You may be wondering how to get it started for the first time. Well, the first thing we need to do is load up the hopper with pellets, and then we're gonna plug it in and get it started. If you want a full step-by-step -step description of how to do this that you can take outside with you, go ahead and check out the article that accompanies this video. I'll have a link to it in the description down below. So first thing we wanna do is actually remove the grates and the flame broiler inside the Pit Boss. Now you don't have to do this every single time, but it's nice to do the first time because you can make sure that the pellets are really making it into the fire pot and making their way down the auger. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these grates. Next, we're gonna remove the flame broiler. So I'm gonna flip this little guy up, get the stick out of there. And then we're gonna gently pull this out. Okay, so now we've got our uh, flame broiler and our grates out of the pit boss. Just leaving the heat diffuser in here, that's fine, but it's nice now because we can see our fire pot, we can see the auger down below here, and uh, we'll be able to see as the pellets start coming in. And again, you don't have to do this every single time, but it is good to do the first time just to make sure everything's working correctly, and just to get an idea of how the pit boss actually works. So next, let's load the hopper with some pellets. All right, so next we need to get some pellets in the hopper to get it started. Now, after you've opened a bag of pellets, you shouldn't just keep it in the bag because they can absorb moisture uh, not being in an airtight container. So I like to keep mine in an airtight container like this uh, Oklahoma Joe pellet bucket. I really like these ones because they're super tight, keep the air out, um, and they also come with a nice mesh screen to help get all the sawdust and stuff out of there too, okay? So I'll put a link to this down in the description as well if you wanna check it out. So we're gonna start loading the hopper with some pellets. You're gonna need a fair amount because we're gonna do about a 30 minute burn off after we get it started, all right? That should be good. We can always add in more as we're going, but that'll get us started at least. Okay, now we've got the hopper loaded with pellets. We plugged in the pit boss. Now it's time to turn the grill on. I'm gonna push our power button over here. You can hear that fan kick on, okay? Now if you just turn it on and wait, the auger is not gonna keep turning continuously. We just loaded this with pellets, so the auger has no pellets in it. The pit boss is set to just have the auger turn for a little bit. You see it just turned off right there. If we don't keep the auger moving, eventually it's gonna time out because it, this pit boss is gonna realize that no pellets are getting to the fire pot. So the first time you load it up, you need to hold this prime button down you see that auger kick back on? It's gonna take about five minutes. It's a little annoying. You gotta kind of sit here and just hold this prime button. We're gonna keep holding this prime button down and in a few minutes, we'll start to see some pellets coming through there. So just be patient and hold it while it's running here. All right, so it's been about four or five minutes here and we've got some pellets starting to fall into the fire pot. I'm gonna keep holding the prime button for about another minute or so because um, we still don't want it to time out. You'll see the little uh, igniter rod in there underneath where the pellets are falling. That's starting to get hot while we've been going through this process too. Once some of those pellets start touching the igniter rod, that's what's gonna get them ignited and going here. And we can put our grates and flame broiler back in and start preheating our grill. All right, now that we've got some pellets in the fire pot and the auger's primed, we're gonna put our uh, stuff back in the pit boss here. So I'm gonna put the flame broiler in first. Gonna get that on. Put our rod back in place. We can leave that open for now so that we can still see what's happening in the fire pot. And I'm gonna put my grates back on. And again, you don't have to take all these off every single time. We're just doing it the first time because we wanted to make sure the auger was turning and everything on our brand new pit boss was working the way it was supposed to work, okay? But in the future, you'll be able to just kind of look through the flame broiler and start to see the pellets falling into the pot. And you can hear them too, which is kind of nice. So you can see now we're starting to get some smoke coming, all right? Those pellets have kind of piled up near that igniter. They're starting to ignite, which is what we want, and we're starting to get some smoke. We're gonna leave the lid open for now. We can close the hopper lid over here although I'll probably add a few more pellets there in a minute. If you wanna come down and take a look at the control panel here. So this is the Pit Boss Pro Series 1150. 
every model is going to be a little different, but for the most part, you're going to have your actual temperature always showing right here. Your set temperature, you're going to push the button to see where you are. It looks like a five, but it's actually the smoke setting. It's the lowest setting on there. So if you turn it all the way down, you get to that S, which is the smoke setting. We're going to leave it on there for about five to seven minutes with the lid open and let some of this white smoke dissipate. Now, generally, when you first start off your grill, this is not the smoke you want to use to cook your food with. When those pellets are just starting to ignite, they're putting off this nasty kind of acrid white smoke that you don't want to use to cook. So this is your initial burn off you're going to have every single time, okay? So let's leave the lid open, let this white smoke dissipate. We'll come back in about five to seven minutes. All right, so it's been about five to seven minutes. You can see that that kind of white yucky smoke has dissipated. We got kind of a clean burn now. You can see a nice flame going in the fire pot, which is what we want. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is we're still in that smoke setting. I'm gonna bring it up to about 350 degrees. So again, gonna push the button and turn it. So we get to 350 and then push it again. 77 is our actual temperature because we've got the lid open. If you look here, you can see that that flame is going nice and strong now in the fire pot. So now that we know everything's lit, everything's working, I'm gonna close the flame broiler and then I'm gonna close our lid. And all that's left to do now is let this come up to about 350 degrees. We're gonna let it just run there for about 30 minutes. And the point of that is to burn off all the chemicals and residues and just nasty stuff from the factory in general that you don't want on there falling on the first meal you cook uh, in your pit boss. So I got it at 350. We may bump it up to 400 degrees or so. If it's a really cold day, sometimes on a pellet grill, it's hard to get to those temperatures. But if you got a nice hot day out, bump it up to 400. Let it run for about 30 minutes. Make sure you got plenty of pellets in the hopper. I'll see you back here in about 30 minutes. All right, guys, we finally got up to uh, 350 degrees. I forgot to mention it. It will take about 20, 30 minutes to get up to that temperature, especially on a colder day like today. So make sure to give yourself time to let it come to temperature. And now we're gonna give it about 30, 40 minutes to kind of run at this temperature. I did run my own uh, temperature probe because I was just curious. And I got it set up here. On pellet grills in general, you'll find that the right side of the grill is the hotter side, okay? That's where the uh, smokestack is, so the air is all coming from left to right and running through there and it's taking the heat with it, okay? So the left side, which is where the pit boss uh, temperature probe is, you can see it down in there, is always gonna be the coolest part of the grill. So just keep that in mind. You know, I was running about 25, 30 degrees hotter on the right side than what it was reading on the left side. So sometimes you can set up, if you got a big piece of meat or something, put the thicker side on the right or, Keep it more to the left if you want to keep it, you know, a little cooler. Um, more to the right if you got something you want to cook a little hotter than what's on there. So just something to keep in mind as far as that's just kind of how it goes with a lot of pellet grills in general. So we're gonna let this run for about 30 minutes, burn off all that stuff, all that nasty uh, chemicals and residues and other things. You can see that kind of bluish glow starting to happen on our flame broiler there. It's kind of burning off some of the oils and other things. So it's. Um, it's getting pretty good. Another thing too is leave the lid closed while you're doing this so it stays at that temperature. You're gonna lose a lot of heat real quick uh, opening the lid and such. So keep the lid closed and uh, you'll be good to go for about 30 minutes here and we'll see you back. All right guys, it's been about uh, 30 minutes here. We've let it do our burn off. So I'm just gonna open the lid up. You can see it's kind of changed color here on the flame broiler, it kind of burned off some of that residue and everything. We've let it run, now it's time to turn it off. So we're gonna come over to the control panel here, and pretty easy, all we're gonna do is hit the power button. Gotta hold it for about three seconds, and you'll see that shutting down uh, icon come up, okay? So that means that the igniter has turned off, the auger has turned off, and our fan is just gonna run, and it's gonna blow out all the pellets uh, until they stop burning inside the fire pot. It's gonna take about 10 minutes or so. So if it sounds like the grill's not turning off and you're not sure what's going on, that's what's going on. All right, it's been about 10 minutes and our shutdown cycle finished up. So uh, I just opened the lid here to help things kind of cool down a little faster. You don't want to spray oil or put oil onto a hot grill. So let everything cool down for about 10, 15, maybe even 20 minutes. Uh, get yourself a can of uh, grapeseed oil, avocado oil, pre preferably some sort of high smoke point oil. Um, it's gonna work best. If you don't have that, uh, canola oil is fine. Um, and, uh, but a spray can is gonna work the best. Um, we're gonna make sure that we close down the uh, flame broiler here because we don't wanna spray any oil 
into the fire pot and other areas that are going to ignite. You also want to stay away from uh, our temperature probe over here on the left side. You can see it kind of sticking up there, so don't spray all over the temperature probe. But other than that, everything else is kind of fair game. We're going to get the grates, the inside of the walls, uh, the top of the flame broiler right here, and then over here by the uh, chimney as well. Not up into the chimney, but kind of on the walls around it. And really what we're doing by spraying this oil is that we're trying to it's almost like seasoning a cast iron pan. You know, it's gonna help kind of create that protective barrier to help against rust, moisture, other things from sticking to the inside of the grill while it's still nice and clean here. Uh, it's gonna make cleaning easier later on. And really all we're doing is just kind of helping to prolong the life of the grill. So you don't have to go crazy with a ton of oil, just a light thin coating with a spray of canola oil or something like that, it's gonna be fine. All right, we can grill about uh, 20, 30 minutes to cool down here. Um, again, you never want to spray oil into a hot grill and definitely never spray oil into a lit flame or a grill that's turned on. Okay, so just got uh, some canola oil here. I find the spray can works the best just for kind of getting all the little nooks and crannies and everything. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and shake that up. And again, avoiding the temperature probe. We've got our flame broiler closed. We're not spraying down in the cavity, down in the fire pot. Just trying to get mostly the grills, uh, the grill grates, and then some other uh, parts of the inside of the cooking chamber here. So I'm just going to start over on the left side, give a little spray. Again, avoiding that temperature probe. And then we're going to go ahead and do the grill grates. Again, you don't have to go crazy with this. Gonna get the upper inside portion here. And then this uh, right side wall as well. All right, now we got it oiled up. Next step is to fire it back up. We're gonna go through the exact same procedure we did before. It's already plugged in. We already got pellets in the hopper. The auger's already primed, so we don't have to go through that again. So all we really need to do is go ahead and come down here and turn it on. All right, and hear that kick on. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the uh, flame brother door closed there. I don't want any oil dripping into that fire pot. Um, and we're gonna let this come back up to temperature again. We're just gonna go ahead and set it to uh, smoke here. Again, we're gonna get that kind of nasty white smoke here in a couple minutes. We'll let that burn off. We're gonna leave the lid open until that happens. Once that burns off, we'll uh, turn it up to 350 again close the lid, let it come up to temperature, let it run for another 30 minutes or so with the oil in here now, and that's really gonna kind of season everything up is cooking it with that oil in place. Um, and then we'll shut down and we'll be done. All right, now our white smoke is starting as those pellets are catching fire again, and uh, let that white smoke kind of build up and burn out here with the lid open. And then we'll turn the temperature up and uh, let it run for about 30 minutes. Hey guys, just wanted to uh, throw one more thing in here. I've been kind of messing with the temperature probe placement while I'm waiting for this uh, to heat back up to burn off our, our oil and season our pit boss. But uh, I, I originally had the probe way on the right side, which is the hotter, and, and it was reading about 40, 50 degrees higher than the uh, readout on the front here. You know, it would say 260 and it was really like 300 over here. I moved it over to the left side to be closer to where the uh, pit boss temperature probe is. And I'm definitely getting much, uh, I just opened the lid, so it's gonna be off a little bit now, but, you know, but we're definitely getting uh, closer in, in accuracy now, you know, uh, six degrees off is a lot better than being 30 or 40 degrees off, that's for sure. So um, as we're making our way back up to 350 here, I just wanted to keep an eye on what my probes were telling me versus what the pit boss was telling me, just to get an idea. And you can see it's, it's going up about maybe five degrees hotter on what it says on the pit boss. Um, versus what it says on my probe. Now my probe is going to bounce around to what it actually is. I'd imagine the pit boss, they don't want the temperature bouncing around every time you open the, the lid. Um, although I do notice it does drop when I do open the lid, so it is reading correctly. But yeah, um, just keep that in mind when you're placing your food on the grill too. You know, if you want to be a little more accurate with what's on the readout here, place your food a little more over to the left side. It's going to be a little closer to where it's reading right there versus on that right side, it's going to be definitely going to be hotter than what the reading you're getting there which is fine I mean if you got a lot of food just be aware that you know the thicker cuts of meat and other things should go on the right side or just move things around so everything's getting evenly cooked so just something to keep in mind I'll see you back when we get up to 350 here
Hey guys, we're almost to 350. I just realized I forgot to do the inside of the lid too, okay? So I'm breaking my own rule about spraying with the grill on, but I figure because it's on the lid away from the fire pot and everything, it'll be okay. This is a major part of the inside of the grill, so make sure to get this uh, inside of the lid as well. Go ahead and close that up now. I'll let that season up too, okay? We were at about 330. I just just dropped on me down to 280. Uh, so it's gonna take a little longer now to get that back up. So sorry about that. Make sure you get the inside of your lid as well. All right, guys, we've let the pit boss come back up in temperature here. You can see I've got it coming up uh, around 365 now. I actually set it for 400 degrees. See on there, 400. I'm just gonna kind of let it ride up to 400 here. It's nice and sunny and warm out now. It should come up pretty quick. Um, you can see that our secondary temperature gauge is pretty much keeping the exact same temperature. So it's doing a good job of showing us what the true temperature is, uh, especially in this kind of left side of the grill here. So that's where my probe is, where I'm getting the most accurate temperature, just to the left of the flame broiler plate there. My guess is that the hot air is coming to the right out of the flame broiler plate and traveling right up to that exhaust there. So that area right there is going to be a lot hotter than the left side of the grill where you're going to get a more stable temperature reading. So something else to keep in mind. So I'm just going to let this kind of ride for the next 30 minutes. Then we'll turn it off. Uh, we're just going to push the power button again when it's done. Let it run through that shutdown cycle exactly like we did before. And then we'll be done. That'll be it. All right, guys, we just turned on the shutdown cycle here. Pushed our power button and the uh, shutdown cycle came on for us. And you can kind of see the color change uh, that's happened since we started the seasoning process here. A little bit of oil and about uh, 45 minutes of heat here around 400 degrees. Uh, our flame broiler looks a little more brown, looks a little more seasoned in. Sides of the wall a little bit too. You can see that oily sheen on the top of the uh, lid now too, okay? It's gonna make it a lot easier to clean and just kind of give us that penetrant of oil there. So just letting it go through the shutdown cycle here and uh, we'll let it cool down and we'll be done. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video on how to start and season your brand new Pit Boss pellet grill. Hopefully get you started with some great cooks this season. If you wanna read full step-by-step -step instructions of what we did today, check out the article. I've got a link to it down below in the description at madbackyard.com. You can also find a whole bunch of articles on barbecue recipes, tips and tricks, how-to guides, for grills, smokers, and other things, all available at madbackyard.com. So go ahead and check that out too. And if you like this video and wanna see more videos like this, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the Mad Backyard YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching.